Hi everybody, welcome to the video on precocious puberty in the specialist area of paediatrics. So first off, a few questions to test your prior knowledge. Question one, under what age is a male deemed as in precocious puberty? Seven, eight, nine or ten. And also note that males generally develop later than girls. So for males, it's generally under nine years. Um, if they start puberty, then under nine years and they're deemed in precocious puberty and for girls under eight years, so slightly younger. This is a rough guide, however, because development does vary so much. Um, this guide is useful to follow as it stops us from missing more serious underlying cause as opposed to a variation of the normal. So important to bear these ages in mind as a rough guide. Okay, next question. What does the term thalloc refer to? So there are a number of terms used to describe pubertal changes in males and females, which I'll go over later. Um, but thalloc is it either beginning of menstruation, gonadal development, breast development, or pubic hair development. So it's breast development in girls. Menarch is beginning of menstruation, A. Um, pubic hair development um, is pubarch and gonadarch is um, gonadal development. So the beginning of the word sort of gives it away apart from thelarch, so that's important to remember it's breast development. Okay, last question. Which of the following is a cause of precocious puberty? So the causes can be split up into central or peripheral, which we'll go into in a bit more detail. So sexual abuse can actually be an important cause of precocious puberty and it's something to really bear in mind when you're taking a history or examination and just to be aware of that as well. All the other ones are not proven to be a cause of precocious puberty but we'll go into the causes later. Okay so this is how the presentation will run. What is it? Symptoms, clinical examination history, and then investigations, differential diagnosis and management, and then follow with some more questions. Okay, so precocious puberty. It is puberty beginning at an unusually early age. And it may have adverse effects, which is really important to bear in mind, either on social behaviour, quite difficult psychologically to, bear, um, to have experiences at an early age compared to your peers. Um, so... Early onset puberty, um, especially in girls, is becoming a lot more common and not necessarily abnormal. That's why these ages are a bit of a rough guide, but it can be quite distressing for parents or the children um, if they're still immature mentally, but physically they're developing. So generally speaking, as I've said, it's under eight years in girls or nine years in boys. And I'll go into more detail about how you can break these ages down into specific presenting developments. So as mentioned, the cause is split into central or peripheral. So that's sort of the underlying cause and a defect in either the hypothalamus pituitary axis for central or exogenous or endogenous sources. So central causes, this is a little bit about um, what could cause um, be a central cause. And it's also termed consonant or gonadotrophin-dependent precocious puberty. So you may also see this abbreviation used as well. So it's damage to the inhibitory system of the brain um, and these sort of things could cause it. Um, hypothalamic hamartoma, I guess how I say it, um, that secretes um, GnRH. So if you have an increase in GnRH, then you'll have an increase in the production of um, sex hormones around the body as well, so that can cause precocious puberty. So that's what that is. Um, and then peripheral causes, this is gonadotrophin-independent precocious puberty, also known as disconsonant. And this is sex steroids, sex steroids coming from another source, so either it can be endogenous, so that's coming from the body, or it can be exogenous, so coming from the environment, such as xenohormones. Um, the most common cause of endogenous GIPP is congenital adrenal hyperplasia, where you have the insufficiency of 21 hydroxylase. Um, but there are, as you can see, there are so many different causes, and it's good to bear these in mind and rule these out when you're trying to investigate. 
Um, adrenal insufficiency, just to recap, that will show as sort of hypo or hypertension, electrolyte imbalances, ambiguous genitalia, um, or virilization in females as well. So symptoms, so these vary enormously and they're usually idiopathic, but these are some good age thresholds to bear in mind to prevent you from missing anything more serious. So that's really important. So for boys, it's sort of gonadal development, so genital enlargement, um, which we're going to further detail about how you measure that, and growth of pubic hair in under nine years old. And then for girls, there's a little bit more to bear in mind. So breast development under seven, pubic hair development under eight, and then menstruation beginning under 10 years old. So the first sign for females is breast development, because as you can see, that's what you're sort of worried about under seven years old, whereas menstruation is 10. So yeah, the first sign for females is breast development, and you want to assess that using the tanner staging, um, which I'm going to be more detail about here. So this is for men, and then this is for women. So the tanner staging, each step is sort of where you'd stage them. Um, so you, this is what you want to look for in your investigations um, and when you're seeing this child. Um, so this is sort of how you stage the breast development and then the pubic hair growth as well. And then in males, the first sign for males is testicular growth. So again, it's um, a good way of sort of categorizing testicular growth here. And you want to assess this using Prada's orchidometer, um, assessing the size of the testes. And this is what it generally looks like. So here they've sort of shown the onset of puberty is generally if the testicular size is around four. So that's a good way of gauging um, sort of the first developmental sign for males and whether they're in precocious puberty. Um, so yeah, that was four mils, what that refers to, or, or also can be 2.5 centimetres in length. Um, and then this diagram sort of is a good overview of what's normal and what's expected. So before you sort of think whether they're in precocious puberty, you've got to know what's normal. So as I said, the breasts um, and then also the pubic hair development, that's the first sign in girls. And then the growth of the scrotum and testes, which you'd measure using the orchidometer. And the change in the voice is the first to appear in boys. And as you can see, boys tend to develop a little bit later than girls. And then sort of menstruation, beginning at 10. So under 10, you start to worry. Um, and then underarm hair, changing in body shape happens slightly later. Um, and for boys, axillary hair and facial hair develop slightly later as well. Okay. So history, you want to... Um, understand whether the pubertal changes are consonant or non-consonant. So consonant, again, is the central cause, so gonadotrophin-dependent precocious puberty. Non-consonant or disconsonant, as I said earlier, is more peripheral causes, so that's um, gonadotrophin-independent. And then whether it follows the normal pattern of endocrine changes, so it could just be the normal pattern just a little bit earlier. So you want to understand when their onset of secondary sexual characteristics was um, and to assess them as well using what I've just said um, and then in girls when they started their menstruation you also want to assess their growth um, because that's a really important sign um, you could just ask say if they're outgrowing their clothes quite quickly or something like that and then also family history because this is something that has a huge factor on children development what their parents development was like um, and their height as well as to whether the child's height is actually to be expected and when they um, started their developmental pubertal developmental milestones as well it's good to get an understanding about that as well. Medication history is specifically important for discontinuant causes such as um, medication that's giving the child extra hormones or steroids and would alter that developmental process and then risk factors as we said child and sexual abuse as well something to bear in mind. So examination, sort of gone over it, but this is sort of a good overview. 
So that's for boys and this is for girls. So tanner staging is really important to um, examine these children and then assessing their body shape, looking at their hair growth and then height measurement as well. Um, and don't forget a chaperone, that's really important. So investigations, these are the ones you'd want to do first. Height measurements, as I've said, um, I'll repeat that. Um, you've got to be accurate and you want to do a growth chart as well and take into account the parent's height. X-ray has to be non-dominant. This is to get an idea of the skeletal age and then compare this to the child's age and whether their skeletal age is slightly behind. And this will give you a good understanding. Estrogen and testosterone um, will also be elevated. This is what you'd expect um, if they are undergoing precocious puberty. Um, and the androgens that are secreted from the adrenal gland are responsible for the pubic and axillary hair development and the acne and body odour. So it's good to get an understanding of what's really going on. Also FSH and LH, um, they'll be high in gonadotrophin dependent precocious puberty. So the central cause, um, if that's what's causing the precocious puberty, but they will be low if it's peripheral cause. So that's a really good way to distinguish between the two. And then also in ultrasound, um, you can see the ovarian follicles, which would suggest that the ovaries are being stimulated um, by the GnRH hormone. So these are some investigations to sort of separate between the two causes. A brain MRI would be good um, if you wanted to identify pituitary tumours or a hydrocephalus or um, the hematoma as well um, and then serum 17 hydroxylase um, which should be raised in congenital adrenal hyperplasia which is quite a common cause of GIPP and then maybe a CT scan of the adrenal glands to see where that endogenous source is coming from. So these are a bit of differential diagnosis and sort of lay it out in quite a clear way. Um, so this is consonant GDPP and disconsonant GIPP um, and these are probably the most common causes. 90% of um, GDPP precocious puberty is um, the cause is never really found. It's normally idiopathic. Um, so as I said, an earlier puberty is becoming more common. Um, and then these sort of things you'll be wanting to look for um, if you're suggesting a disconsonant cause. So in management, you want to treat the underlying cause primarily. Um, and as I said, sometimes a cause is never found and you just sort of would monitor the child. Um, a GnRH agonist is recommended for all patients. So pulsatile secretion of GnRH stimulates puberty. However, if released continuously, then the GnH can actually suppress puberty. Um, and this agonist will actually improve the final height for girls if they're under six years old. So it have really good long-term benefits. That's why it's recommended for all patients. Um, and again, as I said, uh, this is why treatment and management is really important. Even if you might just leave it um, a few years just to see how they go, um, it can impair their final skeletal growth and it can have a psychosocial impact and you want to just check if there's anything else going on. Okay, so some questions, just to recap. So under what age is a female deemed as in precocious puberty? So females develop earlier than males, as I've said. Um, this is different to the first question in the instruction. So it's eight. So under eight years, they are deemed in precocious puberty. So question two, what does the term pubarc refer to? And as discussed, there are numerous terms we can use. So pubic is pubic hair development. That's just a recap as well. And then which of the following is a cause of GDPP? So this is the consonant central cause. So have a look. So it's hypothalamic hamatoma, 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 I'll say it right. Um, so this is the tumour that secretes GnRH. Um, so that's also important to bear in mind. Um, and maybe one reason why you want to do an MRI of the head, just to check. Okay, thank you. That's everything. Um, I hope you found it really useful. And yeah, good luck.